Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, we sit here in the beginning of June with the opportunity of completing the work of many of our colleagues, both past and present. Seven years in the making, folks have bantered about throughout this Commonwealth, from school districts and school board members to legislators and governors, about the need to reshape and reinvent and restructure our pension system in this state. We recognize that our pension obligations are the number one cost driver for local school districts driving up property taxes, the number one cost driver for our state budget, driving out expenditures within parks and recreation, public safety, transportation, and education. We recognize that we have a commitment to keep to our retirees and to our current employees, but also that we have a duty to restructure this system to ensure that future employees will have a retirement that will actually be there for them when they seek to collect from it. This legislation is an accumulation of thoughts and ideas of hundreds if not thousands of citizens across this Commonwealth. As many speakers alluded to, it is not my definition of perfect. But we do not live in a dictatorship where one person gets to decide policy for 13 million citizens. Instead, we live in a democracy where give and take is expected, it is demanded, it is needed to formulate policy that makes sense for a very diverse set of citizens that we collectively represent in this Commonwealth. This legislation represents the most significant step forward to meeting our goals of keeping our commitment to our retirees, our current employees, and creating that system I talked about for future state and school district employees across this Commonwealth. The unfunded liabilities within our system are small, or not small, and they're growing by the day. But this legislation allows us the opportunity with a singular vote at a singular moment in time to reduce the cost to taxpayers by $5 billion. It's amazing that when you think of that very fact, and in the hall of this House, some look at the opportunity to reduce savings by reduce costs by $5 billion as a pittance. Think about the life you came for before you came to this building and negotiated $32 billion budgets. Would you ever think that you would have that opportunity to save the people of this Commonwealth $5 billion? Today, that opportunity is before us. We also have the opportunity to rebalance the risk, to create a more sustainable system by rebalancing that risk between our employees and our employers, the taxpayers of this state. We create the first ever defined contribution option in the history of the Commonwealth. And by implementing the shared risk provisions of this bill, we safeguard future generations against the investment return reductions that we faced in 2008. A provision itself that could save the taxpayers five to 20 additional billion dollars depending on market conditions in the future. Pension reform is not about immediate gratification. It's not about an immediate budget solution. Unfortunately, too many generations of legislators felt that was the goal of pension reform. And we are left to deal with the consequences of those decisions. Now, pension reform is about making a decision today so that the decisions that will come after us by our children and our grandchildren, and those who follow in our footsteps in the hall of this house will not be faced with the same difficulties 
that we struggle with year after year after year because of the pension obligations within our budget. Today we get to give a gift to our children and to their children by ensuring that they don't look back on the decisions we made and wish they had done something differently. As the Pew Foundation, a leading national expert in pension reform, said in their letter in support of this proposal, and I think it summarizes it pretty well, this would be one of the most, if not the most comprehensive and impactful reforms any state has implemented. This legislation would take us from 49th in the country in fulfilling our pension obligations to the top tier. Think about the last time we actually were ahead of the curve in this state. Think about the last time we were a leader in the nation in making fiscal and policy decisions geared towards the future and not focused on the past. Today we have that opportunity and we have it not just because of the people in the hall of this house today or the Senate or the governor, but because many people have worked many years to get us to this point. Many of our members and staff and staff from all four caucuses and the administration have led to this moment where we get to send this bill to the governor's desk, which he has committed to sign. The first leg of a long journey is about to end. And we're going to end that leg together as Republicans and Democrats showing that government can function for the people and by the people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I encourage the members to support Senate Bill 1.